Oh, it's backwards. Okay. Oh, my neck burrito. Oh, bone. Eh. She, 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 she. Um, okay. That had nothing to do with anything. So, um, I recorded a video. And this is, this is the introduction to that video. You'll see it later. Um, welcome. Hi. So, I've been having really, really bad, um, artist block. It's really bad. Um, so I wanted to do a speed draw, but then I didn't end up finishing the speed draw because halfway through I decided that it was the worst thing I've ever drawn and it was really bad. So, what I did instead, because I, I wasn't sure that I was going to post this week, so, um, I recorded myself sketching and talking, uh, answering the questions of the universe. So I want to preface this by saying that this video is satire and um, I use the word stupid to, not stupid, but the finger, I don't know why I did the finger quotes. The finger quotes are secondary. I use the word stupid to describe um, a couple of questions and that was not the best thing that not, not the best descriptor for me to use, so, um, especially not with my monotone, it, it wasn't intentional, um, so just know, the video is satire, um, I cannot do, I, I, I have, My voice is very monotone, apparently, which I don't usually clock until I have to listen to my own voice. So, um, yeah, just know that I use the word stupid to describe um, some of the questions and it's not intentionally... It, I didn't use it to be mean. I used it because at the time I thought it was funny, but that might be rude because what I was meaning was that this question itself was stupid, not you are stupid if you ask the question. So just know that that wasn't my intention, but I didn't cut it out because um, you know, I didn't cut it out. Oh. Yes, this video is satire. Um, it is made for comedic purposes. Um, I have pretty much no expertise in really anything that I say. So, um, I recorded this. It's satire. It's meant to be funny. It's meant to be a joke. I have a monotone, which just comes from being ever so slightly autistic. Welcome to this video. I'm glad that you're watching. Now, this was the intro. Thank you. Yep. Finger guns. Subscribe. Question mark. I don't know. All right. So I tested the sound, and it seems like it's going uh, pretty well. So, um, yes, I wasn't going to post this week, but then I realized that I could still post. It just doesn't have to be a speed draw. And, um, so yeah. Instead of doing a speed draw this week, I thought that I would take my vast awesomeness and knowledge and answer some of the uh, questions the scientists cannot answer because as a not scientist I figured a new perspective would be good um, so yeah I'm just gonna do some sketching and then at the same time I will answer some questions all right so this is from edgy.app Science. Ten scientific questions science still hasn't answered by Zion Guedem. Okay. So then the first one. Why is there less antimatter than matter? Oh, well this is easy. It's because antimatter takes up more space than matter, obviously. 
So if you've got antimatter here, then normal matter is like this. So obviously there would be less antimatter than matter. <laughs> Silly. Um, okay, what is next? What is dark matter? What isn't dark matter? Um, what exactly is dark matter? It emits no light and makes up roughly 25% of the universe. Um, it's matter that can't reflect or refract light. Okay, what is dark energy? The largest majority of the universe content, 70% is in the form of unknown energy that has earned the name dark energy. What is this mysterious gravity repellent dark energy that may suggest a new physical laws beyond the Hmm. Let's see. What is dark energy? That's a really good question. I'm gonna draw nifty. So dark energy is energy that is dark. Okay, next question. Is there a multiverse? Yes, but maybe not in this universe. <laughs> what will be the universe's grand finale? Um, that's a good question. Personally, I am uh, really, pr uh, what's the word, not prone, smitten with um, I'm kind of like the theory that we'll just keep expanding until we sort of wrap around ourselves and then we got like another Big Bang. So that's my answer. Is time linear? No. How consciousness affects reality? Well, I mean, nothing's really real, is it? Seriously. Um, I'm trying to find my sketch. Oh, there she goes. I have a sketch in my sketchbook that I'm going to reference. I really like it, so... Um, hold on just a sec. Okay. How consciousness affects reality. Well, because here's the thing, is that everyone's going to experience consciousness in a different way. So whether or not other people are real is entirely up to whether or not you believe that they're real. So obviously consciousness would affect reality. Does the string theory hold up? Uh, yeah. Is it orderly chaos or chaotic order? First one, then the other. Again, it has to do with perception. If you believe that it's one, then it's one. If you believe that it's the other, it's the other. Man, I'm so good at this. 10. Is there a super force behind the four fundamental forces? Well, you know what they say. Everything changed when the fire force attacked. That made no sense. I'm having a hard time drawing these thighs. Let's see. What do physicists think? Physicists think that the force forces could have resulted from a single and even more fundamental force, and because of that, may unite into one super force. Uh... Nah. We're just gonna go with, um, no. There are only four forces, except that there aren't. There might be more forces. But we don't know what those forces are. Because we're just human. This is fun. I want to I wanna do some more of these. Um, found this article interesting? Yeah, but... Um, in a soon to be way, so I'm not going to admit that. Um, okay. Questions scientists cannot answer. How stuff works. 
All right, what are some questions? Get to the list. What is this, a recipe? Why do we dream? Um, why not? Presumably it's to gather your thoughts and organize data. Or sorry, data. Okay. How can we eliminate cancer? Well, see, what you do is you round up everyone who was born in that specific time, and then you eliminate them. And then you prevent anyone from having snoo snoo nine months before said date. Easy. Okay. What happens when you die? Presumably nothing and everything. You cease to be. But did you ever be? Were you ever? That's a very good question. Find out on the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z. Are we alone in the universe? No? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I live with my parents and uh, siblings. Where does consciousness come from? The brain. How many species are there on Earth? At least three and a half. Is reality real? Yes, but only to some people. And even then, it's kind of iffy. Reality is exactly what we make of it. If we believe that reality is real, then reality is real. But if we don't believe reality is real, then reality is not real. Simple. All right, I'm gonna make her look a little bit creepier. See, the problem is that I'm focusing so much on answering these questions that scientists can't answer that I haven't been really paying attention to what I'm drawing. I can't multitask very well. Okay, close this ad. Uh, what's next? How did life begin? Bacteria. Is time travel possible? Probably not to us, because we experience time in a linear fashion. Also, the fact that the Earth and the solar system itself moved. So, like, if you time traveled, then, like, even just ten years ago, the Earth and the solar system wouldn't be where it was ten years ago. So, if you time traveled, you'd just be, like, out in space. So, you'd have to figure out a way around that, and again, we experience time in a linear fashion, so chances are, unless we didn't, then we wouldn't. So anyway, is the universe truly infinite? Well, what is infinity? It's another thing. We aren't really sure what infinity is because it is so big going on forever, it could mean a lot of things. Oh, I forgot our little sunglass. So this is like Barbie nifty. Um, Alright, well I finished this list too. Man. Oh. Aha. Related stories. Top 5 unsolved brain mysteries. Yeah, I don't care. Again, is this a recipe? I don't care about background information. Okay, the case of nurture versus nature. Unsolved brain mysteries? Bruh, come on. Wait, wait, wait. Do our genes determine how smart we'll be, who we'll love, what we'll prefer to eat for dinner, or does that happen once you're in the... Or does what happens once you're in the world make a bigger difference? Will parents or peers or pop stars ultimately shape the person you become? One way researchers to f wow, one way for researchers to figure out where genes end and where environments uh, begin is the study of identical twins. <gasps> Gasp. Okay. Well, I mean, there's a certain amount of both, right? Like, 
you can't necessarily have one without the other because nurture is the way for us to know what is safe in our own world and nature is to know what is safe in like the entirety of the world you know so it's like um you know when i think it was like peppa pig or something banned an episode uh in australia where uh she befriends a spider that's kind of a nurture versus nature thing because um you know where spiders in like some regions of the world are harmless in australia they could kill you very easily so they had to ban it so that children wouldn't think oh look i can touch this so you know it's it's a mixture of both okay What is next? The puzzle of why the brain stops functioning. Um, whatever. Stuff, stuff, stuff. How brain cells are killed off by degenerative neurological diseases is no different. Ow. Um, let's see. Wait, what was the question? The brain puzzle of why the brain stops functioning. Well, I mean, everything's a brain puzzle if you think about it. Alright, why does the brain stop functioning? That's a very good question. My guess is it has to do with reality. Was that helpful information? No, absolutely not. But I am nothing if not unhelpful. Okay. The secret of sleep and dreams. Bruh, I already answered this question. The conundrum of consciousness. This section might just, quote, blow your mind to use a common expression. Wow, that's so funny. But do you even have a mind? Scientists don't know where the brain ends and the mind begins. Are they the same thing? What about souls? Are these located in our brains? What is responsible for all of the unique thoughts and feelings that make us who we are? Everyone from philosophers to physicians have... Physicists. Has taken up this question of consciousness and come up empty. Uh, let's see. Why do we have consciousness? Presumably, it is because we need a lot of people and a lot of different ideas to survive and to evolve for the gene pool. So by having all of these individual personalities, we can ensure that a lot of different ideas keep us alive. Enough said. Okay. Dang it, that was it? <sighs> okay. We need some more scientific questions. Top 20 question, uh, big questions in science. All right. I need to curve her a little bit more. This is like Barbie Nifty. It's not as good as my sketch in my sketchbook, but I'm also a bit focused, so... I gotta have that big brain energy, you know? Cookies! Oh, don't sell my personal information, you dicks. Okay, 20 big questions in science. What is the universe made of? Matter. How did life begin? Bacteria. We're just a glitch. Are we alone in the universe? I already answered that question. What is consciousness? Uh, ensure uh, it's nature's way of making sure that we survive. 
Why do we dream to process information? Why is there stuff? Because are there other 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 universes? Oh, is this the multiverse theory again? Ugh, I hate the multiverse theory. Because the thing is, it's such a brain fuck. Yes, there are other universes. However, there might not be other universes in this universe because the multiverse theory might not even exist in this universe. So, you know, where do we pull all the carbon? Oh, where do we put all the carbon? <laughs> um, I have an idea. For the past couple hundred years, we've been filling the atmosphere with carbon dioxide, unleashing it by burning fossil fuels that once locked away the carbon below the Earth's surface. Now we have to put all that carbon back or risk consequences of global climate change. What? Oh, of a warming climate. But how do we do it? One idea is to bury it in all uh, in old oil and gas fields. Another is to hide it away at the bottom of the sea, but we don't know how long it will stay there. Okay, find a better solution, my dudes. That That's just burying it alive, you know? One day the corpse will come and haunt us all. Alright, who am I drawing now? I, oh, I know who I'm gonna draw. So I had um, some Amity and Ruth sketches also in my book. Um, they are super lesbian coded because I just liked that. These aren't going to be, like, perfect, but they're sketches, so, like, who even cares? How do we get more energy from the sun? Um, well, I mean, you could try asking it nicely. Or, you know, not. What is so weird about prime numbers? Absolutely nothing. They're natural. How do we beat bacteria with a pogo stick? Can computers keep getting faster? Probably, but we might cap out at some point. Will we ever cure cancer? No. When can I have a robot butler? Just do your own dishes. What's at the bottom of the ocean? Presumably the bottom. Um. Okay, well, I mean, there's got to be, like, sand and possibly magma. Maybe a couple of creatures, you know? Just maybe one or two. Maybe even three, but that's stretching it just a little bit. Okay. What's at the bottom of a black hole? Trick question, there is no bottom of a black hole. Can we live forever? No. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Forever is absolutely not a real construct of time or a real measurement because forever is as long as we make it because time is relative so if we believe that our forever is just our lifetime then yeah we can live forever but if we believe that forever is until the end of the universe absolutely not human lives have a cap but if you believe that once you are dead and no longer are able to process any information because you are dead and that then that's when your universe technically ends that's when your lifetime ends so you know therefore the universe ends because nobody will ever process the world and the information and the universe and live and experience living the exact same way that you do so in theory the universe ends with you. So, technically no, but also technically yes. How do we solve the population problem? The Hunger Games. Is time travel possible? We've already been over this? No. Okay. Piss off. Oh, really? <sighs> Alright, I need more. Five questions scientists still have not been able to answer. Parentheses, yet. Okay, these are really not Disney bodies. I was kind of hoping that they would um, 
be a little bit more um, like the original style. So my thought for these was like Grom outfits, you know, in the future when Luce is kind of an indie icon and Amity is her usual lesbian self. Um, so I have some, I designed some pretty cute outfits. I mean, they're not like anything completely out of this world, you know? It's not like Vera Wang or whatever. Or Wong? I don't actually know. Uh, okay. I don't want to accept your cookies. Five scientists, uh, oh, five questions scientists haven't been able to answer yet. What is dark matter? We've already been over this. What is consciousness? We've already been over this. How does quantum gravity work? Oh, this is a new one. Uh, scientists have tried for a long time to bring together quantum mechanics and general relativity. Quantum mechanics looks at how particles smaller than atoms behave. General relativity understands how gravity impacts large objects, but when the scientists try to understand how these small objects work, they're sh still not sure. Oh, well that's easy. Quantum gravity only affects atoms. But it works in such a way that it keeps atoms as atoms as we know them. So we don't know why or how atoms would work without quantum gravity. You're welcome. What is time? A construct. Why do humans age? Because. All right, I'm going to take a quick break because I, uh, I breezed through those a little bit faster than I expected, to be honest. Man, I could have been a scientist if it weren't for all the math. I can't do math. Well, I can, but like there's basic math and I don't like doing math, so that's why I'm not a scientist. I could be a philosopher, but honestly, seems kind of, I don't know. All right, these, we're just going to pretend that these little blobs down here are hands, okay? This is about the face and the outfits, not the hands. Um, okay. So, Luce, she's got this, like, oh, sorry, her collar is up because, obviously, if it's not up, then what are you even doing with your life? And then here's Amity's necklace. <laughs> Okay, so that's open, and then she's got high-waisted pants, because obviously she's got high-waisted pants. I'm not crazy. <laughs> what else? Oh, yeah, she's got the three-quarter sleeve look going, because I love it. Again, I'm not crazy. A little mad, perhaps, but we're all mad down here. Okay, what was next? Oh, yes. So, oh, how will I give her the correct shaped ears? And then how about I move her head to a more suitable position? And then eyes, huge eyes. Oh, you know what would be really cute? I might actually do this. Is I think they would look really cute in um, the Comey Can't Communicate style. So maybe I'll do that afterwards. Um, Honestly, I don't think that they have enough of personality flaws to even attend Comey school, but they could at least be in the universe, you know? Okay, so she's got 
like a corset. I think she actually has a corset in the time skip, which is what inspired this, but um yeah, and then she's got like this high waist or um high slit skirt. Because I thought that would be cute. This is when I guess they're like Grom es uh, escorts as opposed to like going for Grom because they're a little bit older here. Um, and then Luce obviously has hair. Um, I don't think I slicked it back. I think that I just kind of left it natural. It's sort of curly. Okay. <laughs> Well, super cute, guess. So. Um, also, in the original sketch, they had shoes and feet and all that. Um, Amity has, like, platform boots. But I don't really feel like drawing shoes, so I'm not going to. Okay, I'm gonna look up Coney, not Coney, 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 can't communicate. These guys are a little bit smaller. So one thing about Coney's art style is like the eyes are so big. It almost looks like a caricature manga style, which is kind of cool. Which I mean, that's redundant. Oh! Among the styles or caricature, but whatever. It's just that in America, when we think of caricature, we think of bringing out people's hugest, hugest, biggest facial features and accentuating it so that it's like the only facial feature. Um, I don't really like American caricatures. Or, you know, it's not just American, but, like, you know. Okay, so what's the anime? And I don't really want the anime style because they always change it a little bit. Okay. Stop that. Okay, so the eyes are like down here essentially. Um, I guess it also depends on the character. So, wow, that was an evolution. I'm gonna go back to the five questions. Let's go. What is the meaning? Oh no, I don't care. Ten mysteries physicists can't answer. Dot dot dot. Yet. Oh, this is good. No, I don't want your cookies. Stop trying to give me cookies. You're going to give me a heart attack. Stop it! Okay, fine. 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 Just steal my information. I don't care. Alright, what came before the Big Bang? Nothing. How does a bicycle stay upright? Uh, well, fun fact. When you ride a bicycle, the universe was not expecting bicycles to ever exist. And so, it's just, like, I don't even know what to do. And so that's why. 
Um, so basically it's just a glitch in gravity because it's so unnatural and unholy. Okay. Is the universe infinite or just very big? Well, again, what is infinity? How long does a proton live? Four and a half years. Why is ice slippery? Because. I mean, why is water wet? Why is water slippery? I mean, some animals have a way of um, nullifying the slipperiness. And to be fair, we as humans actually cannot feel wet. We only feel cold or, you know, we only feel temperature. So technically, the water is wet. We do not feel wet. Some frogs can feel wet. So maybe it's the same with ice, you know? What is glass? sand? Can we get energy from nothing? No. Why does space have three dimensions? Well, fun fact, it actually doesn't. It has 27 and a three quarters dimension. The thing is, as humans, we only can perceive up to three dimensions, maybe even four if we are lucky. Why do we move forward in time? We don't. We just experience time linearly in a linear fashion. So, where does quantum weirdness end? It doesn't. How creative computers will dream up things we'd never imagine? Okay, that's not really a question. Oh, wait, are these articles? Oh, subscriber only. Okay, well, I'm not going to subscribe you just so that I can be right. Other sign. Oh. This is a whole list. Alright, I'm going to look up um, questions of life that <laughs> make you cry. That cannot questions about life that cannot be answered okay a hundred fascinating questions with no answers Ooh, i can help with this if god made everything who made god humans obviously do ghosts exist and if so how do we know I mean, technically, yes, they do exist, but technically they also don't exist because everything that exists is in our head and our reality. So if we believe that ghosts exist, then of course they exist. It's the same with God. Like, How did life first start? The Big Bang. Is there anything that can travel faster than light? Um, it depends on how much coffee you give the light. How did we first determine there was a consciousness and a subconsciousness? Supposedly some guy was like, hey, consciousness is when we are actively thinking about something and subconsciousness is when we're not. And then he was like, I'll apply Latin roots to these words. And then that was it. Do beings other than Oh, do beings on other planets consider us aliens? Well, we don't really know. We don't know if other planets have life outside of, like, bacteria or, you know, something like that. So, um, they might not even think that we exist or know that we exist, as we don't know if they exist, so, you know. If everyone has their truth, how do we know what the real truth is? That's a stupid question. There is no real truth. It's all from perception. Everyone's truth will be slightly different, because truth is subjective. Why are cars built to go faster than the speed limits? It's just how engines work, I think. What came first, the sun or the earth? Um, the sun. 
How far east can you travel before you start traveling west? Depends on the map. Confusing unanswering questions. Was math invented by humans or simply discovered? Um, well, I mean, math will always exist in some form or the other. It's like, if in the future we discover a system called, like, Gloop Glorp, wherein we are able to, like, count the strands of our hair, then it always existed as a possibility. It's just that we figured out a name for it and added it to our lo uh, our knowledge. So technically it already existed. It's just that humans discovered how to utilize that property. When you forget a thought, where does it go? It doesn't exist anymore. What makes you uniquely you? Uh, your reality. If rules are made to be broken, why make them in the first place? Okay, the rules were not made to be broken. That's stupid. Sorry. That is not very smart. Rules are made to be broken is, what, a colloquial saying? It's just a saying. They weren't made to be broken. Rules were made to be followed. That's the entire reason we have rules, is to keep society in check. Come on, guys. What do people who have been deaf since birth hear when they think? Oh, I can't answer that. I'm not deaf. What do blind people see when they dream? Okay, this is not an unanswered question. Blind people talk about it all the time on YouTube. It depends on whether or not they were born blind or if they became blind later in life. Look it up. If you try to lose on purpose but accidentally win, did you win or lose? Yeah, two things can be simultaneously true. If you're expecting the unexpected, isn't the ex unexpected now expected? Again, two things can be simultaneously true. Always expect the unexpected. See, I don't even think I'm copying the Comey style anymore. I was so caught up. Oh, Comey style doesn't really have noses. It's okay. Well, because when you say, um, always expect the unexpected, I think that really what it's saying is that you have to be prepared for things that you wouldn't normally think about. So it's not that you're now not expecting the expected, it's that you're now adding the unexpected to your list of expected things. When your soul leaves your body, does it look like you? Trick question. Sometimes, okay, so to some people, souls don't exist. It, uh, we don't even know if souls leave your body. To some people, it does exist, and it's because it's such a finicky thing, it depends on what you believe. If you believe that your soul is going to turn into a ghost and then, like, run around and haunt the planet, then... It depends on what your definition of a ghost looks like. If you believe that after you die, your soul is going to go to heaven and you're going to like be in a jacuzzi with Jesus, then yeah, it would look like you. So, okay. If Adam and Eve were the first and only people, aren't we all related? Yes, but we're all technically related anyway. Because like everyone with blue eyes can trace their ancestors, uh, their ancestor back to like one guy with genetic mutation and then... Um, people with eyebrow ridges, um, or like more prominent ones, um, have Neanderthal DNA. So, like, yeah, if we go back far enough, a lot of us can trace our ancestry to, like, one or two people. If you enjoy wasting time, were you really wasting time? I mean, there's really no such thing as wasting time. Let's let's be honest. Yes, we have things that need to be 
done, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're wasting time if we are able to face emotional satisfaction in our activities. So, because like, here's the thing, is humans are the ones who have invented what it means to utilize time. I mean, if you look at like dogs and cats, what do they do all day? So, if we applied the same logic to humans, then we're just being silly little guys, and that's beautiful. Okay. Who was the first teacher's teacher? We've always taught. Like, th that's how we pass information is by teaching, so... I don't know. Figure it out. When you wait for your waiter when you wait for your waiter to come take your order, aren't you now the waiter? No. You're waiting for your waiter. Like that's just a play on words. That that means very little. So what exactly was the first person to milk a cow really trying to do? presumably milk the cow. They probably saw a calf drinking out of the udders and was like, I wonder what that is, and then milked the cow and drank it and was like, wow, this tastes like shit. And then he shared it with his entire village. And then one person was like, I really like this, actually. I'm going to leave it on my counter. And then they came back the next day, and it was yogurt, and he tried it and was like, huh, this is really gross. And then he he made the rest of the village try it, and one person was like, wow, this is actually really good. And then that's how, you know, yogurt was done. And then he left his yogurt out on the counter, and, and then he came back, and it was cheese. And then he made people try it, and it, it just kept going on until dairy products were the norm. What is the exact definition of perfect health? Average. Do animals have a subconscious? Yeah. Because here's the thing. Is that when, like, a cat knocks, like, a vase off the counter, that's them listening to their subconscious. It's just that cats are evil. Um, will reincarnation ever be possible or does it already exist? Depends on what you believe. That's literally the only answer that there is to it. Because, like, I know people who, um, I lost my train of thought. I think we all know somebody with a story where it's like, boy looks at picture of grandpa, dead grandpa, and is like, that's me, you know? Like, it really all depends. Like, I'm pretty sure I know how I died in my last life. It's like, locked in a safe and drowned. So anyway. Um, do you really need a license for a self-driving vehicle? Yeah, because, like, you're responsible for knowing how it works. And you have to be liable for any damage that it causes to people or property. Is it possible to know it all? Yeah, have you ever seen Clarissa Explains It All? Can technology be used to control our emotions? I mean, if you believe it can, then yeah. All right. When did time first begin? Um, with the human consciousness. Is there a reason you are here at this point in your life? Um, no, just because. Does time end at some point? No, it's linear. Er, sorry. 
It's shaped like a figure eight. It's just that we only experience it like this. Why do we keep time? Um, because humans decided at some point that it was really important to utilize the time that we have on Earth because it's very limited. And so we were like, hey, we need a way to figure out when this is. Who decided age is based on the rotation around the sun? Me. If the early bird gets the worm, why do they tell you that the good things come to those who wait? Because? So, like, the early bird gets the worm? Like, what's weird about that is that it's referring to food. So it's like... Birds eat worms, yes? So when they're saying the early bird gets the worm, that, like, I interpret it as, like, work quick to take care of your friends and loved ones, or your, your family and loved ones and all that. Um, because demand, uh, supply and demand, you know, all of that stuff. But good things come to those who wait is, like, don't jump the gun on good opportunities because you need to make sure that they are um, actually worth the sacrifice and investment and time and all that. So I, I guess it's open to interpretation as all things in life are. Who created the first calendar and how did they know where to start? I'm pretty sure the ancient Aztecs had calendars and they based it on seasons. So it's not necessarily that they were like, yes, we will start this in June. You know, it was like, oh good, it's the time of the year where these the certain types of crops do really well. And this is the certain time of year where there's a lot of rain. So... We have to make sure, and this is the time of year where it snows, so we can't really plant anything. So we have to make sure that we are doing well and preserving shit. And, uh, yeah, and then later on, it just sort of spread, I guess. I mean, for starters, July and August were literally added because, which one was it? Um, Julius Caesar. Or sorry, Kaiser. It was one of the Gaiuses, um, named it after himself and his, I think, nephew Augustus. So, time is relative, it literally doesn't matter. How do we know the future is not actually the past and vice versa? Bruh, I just uh, I've said this like three times. We only experience time in a linear fashion. It is simultaneously both. Come on, listen to me. Will there come a time when people will live forever? I've already answered this question too. Yes and no. Alright, I don't really know if I mimicked the Comey style very well. Um, I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. So these are just sort of anime. Will people still drive in 20 years? Yes. Does time always move forward? Only to us. Are past, present, and future real? No. Is time infinite Will or will it run out one day? It's infinite. Does time really exist or is it a shared mental construct? It is a shared mental construct. Scientific unanswered questions. Is the Earth alive? Yes. Where does the universe begin and end? At the same point. If you drill a hole through the middle of the earth and leap through, are you falling or floating? Two things can be true. Although, one would assume that once you reach the gravitational center, you just sort of stay right here. Forever. Um, also, you die because 
the middle of the earth is famously very hot. So, I mean, you wouldn't even be able to reach the center before getting completely obliterated. Were there people that existed before the universe? No. If everyone on earth leapt into the ocean at once, would we flood the world? Yes. Do caterpillars know they will morph into butterflies, or do they just like cocoons? Um, I mean, their brains are pretty small, so... I don't know. I like to imagine that when, um... Uh, caterpillars become butterflies everything just becomes something new so it's like they aren't even the same thing that they were before they're completely new and experiencing life completely differently so they aren't even the same like they don't have the same memories or anything it's all just nature if we evolve from monkeys why are there still monkeys running around okay we didn't evolve branching out so it's like okay so primates right so I don't hold on I'm gonna look this up real quick also I'm pretty sure you can google did we evolve from monkeys did we evolve from monkeys no humans did not evolve from monkeys we evolved from a common ancestors which we also, like, we're related to apes, but we are not evolved from apes. Also, monkeys have tails. Apes don't have tails. We're prime apes. Who decided February should have 29 slash uh, 28 days while all the rest have 30 slash 31? I don't know. I don't care. Will a journey to the center of the Earth really ever be possible? No. Will we ever find a cure for cancer? No. How long before people can opt to clone themselves? People can already clone themselves. It's just not like it is in television. Is there life on other planets? Yes. Will we one day be able to back up our brains on storage devices? Probably. If a human being is genetically enhanced, are they still human? I mean, what does it mean to be human? That's the thing. Like, there's so many TV shows and movies, and it's like, what does it mean to be human? Are androids human if they love? And, like, the entire thesis statement of those films is like, if you can love, then you're human. It doesn't matter where you came from. So, you know, if you have human experiences and have lived as a human, then I see no reason why you are not human. Okay. Why do people bake cookies but cook bacon? I mean, why do you bake a cake? It's because it's in the oven. Like, you typically cook on the counter on the uh, stove top and then bake in the oven. So that's a stupid question. At what age does old age begin? Presumably when your body starts to decay on itself. How do you know your life isn't just one crazy hallucination? If you believe it is, then it is. If you hit yourself and it hurts, are you weak or are you strong? You're stupid. Um, if something is described as indestructible, hasn't it just been described? Oh, sorry, indescribable. Yeah. Although, the thing is, when you say indescribable, like, okay, so here's the thing with adjectives, is if you say that something is green, then what does your brain go to? Like, your brain will think of the grass, and it will think of your cactus mug, or your cactus, or your houseplants, or whatever. But then, and same, like, if you describe something as big, then you know, like, 
Maybe not exactly. Like, if you describe something as, like, six foot one, then you can have a better grasp on its size compared to you. But if you describe something as indescribable, then technically, yes, you've used an adjective to describe that thing. But perception-wise, if you can't think of what it looks like, then you can't necessarily describe it in any other words. So, um, this is another perception question. There are a lot of those. Um, okay. How would you look up the word dictionary in the dictionary? Probably by typing dictionary in the dictionary or looking under D in the dictionary. How far up do bald people go when washing their faces? Probably up to their hairline. Why do people say slept like a baby when babies wake up throughout the night? Presumably because those people are childless and only remember sleeping as an infant or, you know, as a young child being forced to have nap time and then waking up and feeling awesome but forgetting that they had meltdowns in the middle. If a cyclops closes its eye, is it winking or blinking? See, the thing is that winking and blinking have two different functions. Um, it's one of those social things. So it's like if the intention is just to blink, then they're blinking. But if the intention is to wink, then they're winking. Are eyebrows facial hair? Yes. Can you talk down to a person taller than you? Yes. That's a silly question. Are prisons equipped with emergency exits? Look it up. If you dive into the fountain of youth but can't swim and drown, will you still live forever? No. Because at some point you're gonna... Okay, well, for starters, the fountain of youth does not exist. Like, remember the Chinese guy who was looking for a potion of immortality? And then he ended up drinking mercury and dying because he drank straight mercury and then was buried with all the terracotta warriors. I think that's the same guy. Yeah, for starters, the, the fountain of youth does not exist because, again, we experience time in a linear fashion, so, like, there's literally no way for you to reverse your aging. Like, metabolic age and physical age are two completely separate things, and... But hypothetically, we'll go hypothetically, if you were to jump into the fountain of youth, then you would continue to de-age until you no longer existed. If Cinderella fit, in, fit the lost slipper perfectly, how did she lose it in the first place? Foot sweat. If a word is misspelled in the dictionary, how do we find it? By looking? Okay, here's some random unquest uh, unanswerable questions. What are dreams made of? They're intangible. They're not made of anything. How long will people remember you once you die? Depends. Like... Do you mean, like, one person, or do you mean, like, in general? Because, like, remembrance is as close to immortality as humans can get as far as um, the perception of other people. So, like, for instance, Freddie Mercury, right? He's been dead a little while, but people still remember him. People who aren't even, like, related to him, remember him. People who weren't his friends remember him, because he was a really big figure. So if you're asking, like, how long will people remember him in the future, then that's a good question. I mean, how long have people remembered King Tutankhamen, or Cleopatra, or the dinosaurs? Like, there might be times in which you forget about them, but then 
as long as they're in the public consciousness, then they are remembered, even if it's not technically accurate to how they might have lived their life or, you know, whatever. If it exists in the human conscious, then it is to some extent true. Why set goals if everyone is eventually just going to die? That's pessimistic, because you need to use your time. Humans only have a set amount of time to do things, and if they, you know, don't want to, um, this is trying, I'm trying to draw data, by the way. Um, I don't remember what it looks like, though. So I'm just kind of, I should probably look up a picture, but I'm using my phone. What was I saying? Oh, right. I mean, humans only have, like, what, 80 years tops, so in order to utilize that time and feel like we have achieved a goal and a purpose, we set goals to achieve and leave our legacy and our footprint. It's one of those things that is intrinsic to the human experience. Are soulmates really a thing, or do two people just like each other a lot? That's... Oh, I hate soulmates. Okay. There's no such thing as soulmates. I hate to break it to you, but literally anybody could be your quote-unquote soulmate if you just understand them as a person and are able to grow and change. You know? It's like... The same thing with love. It's like, love is not a feeling, love is a state of being. You have to put in the work to love. So, like, there is no love, there is only lust, and love itself is just a byproduct of living and being alive, you know? Okay. Why do we have belly buttons for our entire lives? Because they're a scar. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could get rid of it, but it's baby's first scar, you know? <laughs> like, it's proof that we are alive. What do we call French kissing in France? Okay, well, this is a very easy Googleable question. What is French kissing in French? Un baiser amoureux, a lover's kiss, or un baiser avec la langue. <laughs> a kiss with the tongue. What is the wealth and fame threshold for being assassinated and not murdered? I don't know. Do dentists go to other dentists? Yes, obviously dentists go to other dentists. It's like, therapists go to therapists, doctors go to doctors. Of course dentists go to dentists, it's just a part of being alive. If R-rated movies are for adult, why do children act in them? You know, that's a very good point. Um, we should just cast adult men to play children, just like we used to in um, Shakespearean times. I think that would be way funnier, to be honest. It's just for the immersion. Like, that's literally the only reason is for the immersion. Are braces removed when someone dies? I think it depends on the family's wishes. Since tomatoes are a fruit, should ketchup be considered a smoothie? <sighs> no. Because... So, here's the thing, is that a smoothie is typically cold. So, ketchup is not a smoothie. Because, I mean, it's closer related to a milkshake, let's be honest, but 
ketchup is more along the lines of a jam than a smoothie because a smoothie is typically cold. Does hating hateful people make you a hateful person? I mean, technically, yes, but I mean, it's really difficult not to be a hateful person. So, you know, no judgment. <laughs> if the number two pencil is most widely used, why is it not number one? So I actually asked one of, um, I asked my teacher about this once, um, and she said that the number two pencil was used for exams because um, it had to do with the machine used to grade. Um, the the lead just ended up turning, uh, being able to be scanned in. So I suspect that what happened was the number one pencil was created first but then the number two pencil was more useful. So that's why it is. If people forget about you after you die, did you ever really exist? Two things can be true at the same time. Yes, technically you existed and you did take resources from the planet, but if no one remembers you, then technically your existence is no longer in the public consciousness. So, no, you no longer exist. Do we all hear the same sounds? Oh, do we all hear sounds the same? No. Are we actually free willed or are, or are our actions predetermined by destiny? There's no such thing as destiny. See, the thing is, this again has to do with time. So technically, we can do things because we want to, and whether or not that's free will is completely up to interpretation. But the thing is, when we do something, it is both already happened, not happened yet, and is simultaneously happening with every other thing that's ever existed and been done. So, you know, do with that information what you will. What happens after you die? Um, you die. Is it really possible to be objective? Yes. What is the purpose of human beings? There is none. What is God? A construct based on consciousness and belief. What is the devil? Same thing. Who decides what was right and what was wrong? Um, well, here's the thing. I've been saying that a lot. Um, so wrong and right do not exist. I suspect that it is based entirely off of what is best for the community, and that's how morals began. So it's like, for instance, murder is pretty high up there on the list of things you don't want to do. But why is that? Why why is murder wrong? And you know, the a lot of even animal. Um, groups. Why is murder wrong? Probably it is because we are social uh, animals and social creatures and so we need that. Um, this looks nothing like data. So we need the population and we need the numbers to help our population grow. So that's why murder is wrong, but sacrifice is okay because that is for the good of the population. So, you know, that, that is my suspect. Um, what is up with his hair? I don't think I drew the right texture. Like, I know his hair kind of... Oh, it's kind of bald. So the thing is, like... I remember he has like this puff sort of thing. Like that. I'm just gonna. Oh, he looks silly. That's okay. What was I saying? Oh, yes. So basically, what is wrong and what is right is based entirely off of what is best for the population at the time. 
So it's like murder and sacrifice are two completely separate things. And like, you know, socially. Um, well, I still lost track of what I was saying. I know what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it has to do with keeping the population in check. And now we don't have to do that as much, so a lot of our um, morals have kind of carried over from um, when we had to do that. So, you know, murder and thievery and all of that, those are all wrong things morally because they've carried over. Ah, oh, two more questions. Was there a time when nothing existed? No. Because something has always been something, and nothing has always been nothing, so simultaneously yes and no. Two things can coexist. Is karma real, or are we just making it up so people will be kind? It's all subjective. Oh, wow, whoa, wait, there are 200? Oh man, how long have I been drawing? I feel like I've not drawn, oof, an hour and 14 minutes, that's a while. Alright, I guess that I will just, um... Insert up to a hundred and then end this because that is way too long. Um, was there a time when nothing existed? Oh no, sorry. Is karma real or are we just making it up so people will be kind? I mean, if you believe it's real, then it's real. That's really how it goes. Alright, last one. Which came first? The fruit called orange or the cup? Oh god. <sighs> The fruit came first, the color came second. Alright, that one was stupid. Um, are we really living or are we actually slowly dying? Oh, dying slowly. Both. At what point does it go from partly sunny to partly cloudy? I would assume whichever came first. So if it's like, if it's sunny first and then the clouds come and lock the sun out, then it was it's partly cloudy but then if the clouds were there first and then the sun kind of pokes through then it's partly cloudy or partly sunny or you know vice versa i don't know what i'm saying anymore anyway so i only drew a couple of things to be fair um i might continue to sketch and then just overlay some things, some sketches on top and use the voice audio. So anyway, thanks for watching and listening to me ramble. Bye. Testing again. Okay. So thank you for watching the video. Um, this is after editing Sword of Sophie and I felt the need to say that um, my tones got really bad towards the end. <laughs> they were really bad. Um, so oh, I don't know if next time I do it, it might be helpful to have a face cam, um, just so that people can see my expressions and see that I'm not trying to be hateful, I'm just socially inept. So, um, yeah. Thank you for watching, and if you watched all the way through, thank you for sticking with me and uh, dealing with my, <laughs> we'll call it ineptitude. Um, so yeah, next, I'll, I'll definitely try and, um, make my language a little bit more friendly next time. I use stupid a lot, like, I don't normally do that, I think, but maybe it's just because I'm hearing it as the first time, 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 so, yeah, I'll try and fix that, um, so yeah, thank you.